Everybody right now is freaking out. We also have talk of CERN in this video as well. Like this video, share this video, and let's check out this conspiracy. Let's time see what's going on. For the first time in 80 years, a star system located 3,000 light years from Earth will be visible to the human eye. It's being called a once in a lifetime event. The researchers here feel that CERN, they're within yeah. reach of finding new particles that Damn. really make the universe tick. One more heave, they say, and they could make one of the biggest breakthroughs of all time. For those less scientific, we found at least one person who has an uneasy feeling about the rare alignment and how it'll somehow impact his daily life. It kind of disrupts wow. things that are normally taking their course. This enormous underground lab lies hidden away beneath the Swiss French Alps. The Any of you in the path of the solar eclipse that's gonna happen? Obviously, this video, if you're watching this later on after the solar eclipse, then, uh, yeah, you know, we have the CERN topic coming in, so this is not just about the solar eclipse, but I personally am in Montreal, and guess what? We're gonna have a total solar eclipse here. Let me know what city you located in. plan is to stretch it even further. If it uh, goes off between now and, and uh, <clears throat> September, October, it will be visible, <clears throat> excuse me, everywhere. Um, it's... The Nova what? will get up to about second magnitude. Uh, that's about the 50th brightest star in the sky. It's the same as uh, Nova explosion. Nova explosion will occur 3,000 light years away, and I think that's going to happen like September, or October, like he's saying, uh, and it's going to be visible. Holy shit! Uh, Polaris. If you can see Polaris from New York City, uh, you can see this Nova. Uh, it'll be easy to see if you get out to a, a dark place. Uh, yeah. It will be bright for a few days. It will get up to, to as I said, second magnitude and then fade. Uh, in a dark place, you can probably see it for a week or two. Now, the large... Had and they also do say, right, like the, the stars that we see uh, in the sky, more often than not, those have apparently died. Because, like, it's the delayed, right? Because it takes time for the light to come uh, and for uh, for us to see it. It's like s some planets that we might be able to see on the Earth. I'm not talking about, like, the, the, the planets that are in our solar system. Because those are nearby, like, you, you know what I mean, right? But, for example, if we were to see a, a, a planet that's, like, thousands and thousands of light years away from Earth. And if we were able to see it, like, just by looking up in the sky uh, from Earth... If it's like thousands and thousands of light years away, chances are that that planet has already been destroyed. And we're seeing that delay uh, in real time happening. It, it's it's uh, confusing if this is the first time you're hearing this concept. But like uh, those of you that know what I'm talking about, it's it's insane. It truly Drone is. Drone Collider is the world's biggest atom smasher. But as it turns out, it's not big enough. The European Centre for Particle Research, CERN, is unveiling details of a new particle accelerator today. Something yeah. three times larger and twice as deep. There are They're trying so to play God. many outstanding questions in fundamental physics today and in our knowledge of the universe, its structure and its evolution, for which we have no answer. And so we need more powerful instruments to be able to address uh, those questions. Thousands of scientists here are hunting for the tiny particles that are contained in the atoms that make up the world around us. Professor Mitesh Patel has spent his entire professional life searching for them. I think for me this is really about exploration. To be able to look for something genuinely new. If you're going to go and explore the unknown, then of course you don't know what you're going to no, I, I like okay. We have heard like crazy stuff about CERN, like they're trying to play God and all that. Now, listen, I'm the last person that will be like, okay, yeah, go for don't go for exploring. Like, I'm all about like ex exploration, and I think it's good. Like, space exploration is good, but we also need uh, like underwater and ocean search as well. We need to explore what's down there as well, a lot more too. Uh, so, I'm all up for exploration, but there are certain things that you don't mess with. There are certain things like, do not play God, let God play play god let let god do the, the the thing that he's good with right like just don't mess with that and cern is quite allegedly like messing with things that they should not be messing with so a lot of people are concerned this is why they call it cern right uh, uh we are a lot of a lot of people are concerned and we are concerned with the cern absolutely it's fine and we you baffled. can't guarantee yeah. a particular out this enormous underground lab lies hidden away beneath the Swiss French Alps. The plan is to stretch it even further. Nearly every day, I still get that sort of wow as I look at all of it. 
This experiment has been going on for more than a decade. It's made some important discoveries, such as a particle called the Higgs boson. This is one of the detectors that discovered the Higgs 12 years ago. It was an incredible scientific achievement. But the LHC was built to do much more than that. It was supposed to discover brand new particles that would change the theory of physics. It hasn't, so in that sense, it's failed. And that's why they need a larger machine. Man. The plan is to build what's called the FCC, the Future Circular Collider, Holy next shit. to the existing accelerator. It'll be at least. It would be really surprising, like if some of you are watching this video from actual like this place, right? That would be crazy. If you are around this area, where exactly is it? Closer to Geneva, right? Uh, if you're around that, like, uh, have you uh, noticed anything bizarre? Uh, have you ever experienced a bizarre activity? I'm at least curious. twice as deep, and measure nearly 91 kilometers. That's around 56 miles. Inside, particles will travel much further than they currently do. They're pulsed by an electric field and stronger magnets, which make the particles collide with much greater force and hopefully revealing far more. And fastest way to ruin our planet as well, yeah. More. But it is more than that because there are lots of physicians, I know some, they're doing very strange experimentation. There are beings from portals coming in and out. It's physicists from the CERN who told me this. They've testified so is... to beings coming in and out of portals. Yes. What? What the hell? Okay, uh, okay. so yeah, these are two people. I don't know the credentials, but I, I also do not want to dismiss this. I also don't want to like blindly believe this either, so don't blindly believe it. But it's like CERN is something that we're all concerned with. Yeah, sure, but it's like we, we heard these conspiracies, but I only took them as conspiracies. And now it's like more than just conspiracy by the looks of it. Uh, what do you guys think on this one? And if you have knowledge about uh, CERN, then definitely let us know in the, the comments so we can be concerned about it. And, and they were things? saying, I mean, I, I met them at a dinner and, and there were two of them. And uh, both said that, yes, they have, you know, uh, secondhand uh, proof that the people who... who uh, you know, they're, they're dealing with the boson of X and the um, subatomic uh, things. So they have apparently in the bottom of the stern uh, this this portal, this door where they are dealing with all the subatomic uh, dimensions. They say there are 17 different dimensions of reality. Okay, 17, not 117. Uh, the captions are a little bit, okay, 17 different dimensions of reality. What the hell? That's what the, those physicists say. Some others say there are more dimensions. You know, we know the uh, time, space, uh, you know, the tri-dimensional uh, X, Y, Z <laughs> in, in, in a graphic. But um, then you have more dimensions and uh, they are playing with that. They're using that and they have, were a group and they had a, a being. They did not tell me more who came that doesn't resemble a human. And then they had another one and they have a proof because they left a scarf. <laughs> they left a scarf. And now when you look at what is going on in the CERN, there is a fight from some of the military um, agencies, uh, Intel. They say that there is a, a fight on time. They're trying right. to change time. Brilliant. You're going to so much effort. Uh, and, and dimensions do exist, right? And it ha has been like one of the, the thing that has been concerning and baffling scientists, uh, no pun intended, but concerning and baffling scientists for a while. Because, uh, and we have seen like dimension thing play out really, really well in an uh, in inter interstellar movie, right? Interstellar, great movie. If you have not seen it, definitely check it out. Because you cannot see what's happening in dimension four. Just like how d in dimension two, in 2D, they cannot see what's happening in 3D. We are in 3D, right? So there's definitely the fourth dimension. There's 5D, there's 6D and all that. Uh, and it's like, what is happening there? You, you cannot comprehend it. We just uh, cannot. Time, space, and uh, there's another factor that makes it 3D. Time, space, and uh, gravity, I believe, right? I could be wrong. You correct me if I'm wrong, for sure, in comments. Digging all these tunnels, spending so much money, to smash particles together. And, and so face, what's uh, the point? Gravity, I think. Um, scientific exploration. I think it's almost like asking, you know, what's the point of art or music? I think humans have this curiosity of finding what's out there and what is 
how does the world around you work? And FCC will help us answer some of those questions. And, and before, like, <laughs> they, they end the entire planet and then, like, you find out everything all at once when you end the planet, right? The countdown is on to a once-in-a-lifetime total eclipse. The total eclipse takes place on April 8th. At yeah, 3.20 coming up. p.m., our world will plunge into the eerie, mysterious, wonderful darkness that is totality we are in fact the if you're watching this video later on because i'm i suspect that most of you are going to watch this before uh, but like maybe a lot of the new viewers that are going to find this channel they're going to see this video after uh, let me know what happened like did something bad happen did something good happen uh yeah sure de definitely share your experience but wait for it the only planet where that has a moon just the right size to block out the sun. But also a few other planets are gonna be visible during this time. A few that we're obviously used to seeing. So once that becomes complete totality, it becomes darkness, you're gonna have Venus, which again, we see a decent amount of times, Jupiter as well. This is 12P, which is the Pons Brooks Comet. It comes around every 71 years. Now, the reason that you might be able to see this with the naked eye versus just a telescope is because this comet is known for flare ups. Oh. It's basically a ball of dirt and ice. So chunks of it routinely break off mm -hmm. and it causes a much brighter flare as it's traveling across the night sky. It actually, because of the way it's shaped right now, it looks like it has devil horns because of the way chunks have broken off. So it's nicknamed the Millennium Falcon. Ah. And so if we're lucky ah. enough to get clear skies, the eclipse, and one of those chunks breaking off, you might get to see that comet as well. With 13 states across the country in the path of yeah. totality. According to NASA, the great North American eclipse will stretch from Mexico to Canada. Imagine like you're a fish in in the sea water somewhere around here. Maybe like imagine you're a whale, right? You just like takes a jump out and you're like, oh, what, what happened to the sun? What happened to the moon out there? I do not see the moon. It, it would be wild, right? And are any of you in the, the path? And last anywhere from three and a half to four minutes. When the corona Dino. comes out and it goes total, it's like this eyeball looking at you from space because the sun, instead of being bright, is dark and it has this white halo around it and it's like somebody's eye looking down at you. Yeah, that's like God watching you right there, you know? We're gonna be live on- That's God watching you being dumb right now, you know what I'm saying? TV here on Four ABC. Or rather than that, like that's God watching all of us being dumb on planet. <laughs> it's long, so you'll get the The totality. The whole spiritual experience. Oh yeah, spiritual experience. experience. I'm looking forward to. If you miss it this time around, the next full solar eclipse in the U.S. from coast to coast won't happen until 2044. 2045. Oh, it's 24. Unreal. What? Okay, I did hear 2044, but it's 2045. Okay, my bad there. But... Visceral experience and the whole anticipation. The first stage of the new collider won't be fully operational until 2045. Why is that Geneva... so much more than? Why, why is Geneva of such significance? Because you've yeah. got the, the World Health uh, Organization, all these meetings in Geneva. You've got um, CERN in Geneva, Davos, Switzerland. You've, why is Geneva so significant? Uh, and real quick, like what whatever she said earlier, it's like very, very conspiratorial. But what if it's not? And, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that like, if any of you recognize her, if any of you know her credentials, uh, and if any of you know what what I'm trying to find out whether or not she's credible or not, you, you know what I mean? Because if she's credible, and then okay, yeah, we'll we'll be like, okay, well, damn. But if she's not, then it's like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah, I would say Switzerland is very significant in general, but uh, because of our neutrality. Uh, there could be many factors, I, so I could take it at different uh, at different levels. The geopolitically, uh, the you. fact that Switzerland is thank you for subscribing, appreciate the it. The nice country of peasants, uh, former mercenaries, uh, historically, and, and they're, they're nice. They look, I mean, they're compliant and neutral normally. That's one. But actually, the other one is the banking system. You know, secret banking system still to this day. They can put all the money they want. Uh, the immunity is another one, geopolitically. As the scientists open, you do hypothesis because there are many factors. I, so I could take it at different uh, at different levels. The geopolitically, uh, the fact that Switzerland is a nice country of peasants, uh, former mercenaries, uh, historically, and, and they're, they're nice. They look, I mean, they're compliant and neutral normally. That's one, but actually the other Normally. one is the banking system. 
you know. Okay, well, in my mind, I'm assuming like those people are easily controlled, okay? Yeah, that that's why they're there. Secret banking system still to this day. They can put all the money they want. Uh, the immunity is another one, geopolitically. As the scientists open, you do hypothesis because that's how you build uh, an open reality because otherwise you, you don't, you miss the point. It makes sense because they're all here. So it's the World Economic Forum is just opposite the UN. The UN is, you know, 10 minutes by car uh, to the CERN. Um, then you have all the sports <laughs> association, FIFA, UFA, also at 10 um, minutes, half an hour from everything. No. So, yes. no. and, and then we have the Bank of Settlements in Basel. That's two hours and a half away by car. But it's all there. Small Switzerland is like the Disneyland of everything they want to do. So, yeah. yeah. We're close to everything. Scientists working yeah. at the Large Hadron Collider, operated by CERN, have made public the anticipated scheduling of the initial interactions between proton beams on April 8th, following the completion of all machine assessments and adjustments. Subsequently, the substantial experiments carried out by CERN, which entail the collision of proton particles, will be able to recommence their scientific activities for data collection and analysis. Many individuals within the realm of social media have brought attention to the forthcoming total solar eclipse scheduled to occur on Monday, April 8, 2024. This celestial event is projected to traverse North America, making its passage over countries such as Mexico, the United States, and Canada. Mm, the initial yeah. phase of the total solar eclipse is set to commence above the South Pacific Ocean. In the event of favorable weather conditions, the point of first contact with totality... So with CERN reactivating on the 8th, the day of eclipse, it makes me think they might know something about how maybe certain things can only be done when certain conditions are met. <laughs> on the North American continent is predicted to be along Mexico's Pacific coastline, occurring at approximately 11 in the morning. Numerous individuals have commented concerns regarding the potential negative outcomes, suggesting that scientists may be overstepping their bounds by engaging in these experimental pursuits, likening it to playing the role of a deity. In the sphere of speculative science fiction and theoretical physics, the intriguing concept of accessing a portal using the Large Hadron Collider has sparked the interest of numerous enthusiasts. Various hypotheses suggest that the immense energies released during particle collisions within the Large Hadron Collider might potentially lead to the formation of subatomic black holes or wormholes, which are transient phenomena with the potential to act as gateways to alternate dimensions or parallel universes. This idea has captivated the minds of scientists and science fiction aficionados alike, prompting deeper explorations into the realms of possibility and the underlying fabric of the universe with its infinite mysteries waiting to be unraveled. In a theoretical situation, if particles collide within the Large Hadron Collider, it has the potential to create a microscopic black hole, a space in the fabric of the universe where gravitational pull is immensely intense, preventing any form of light from escaping. These transient black holes, although harmless, present an opportunity to gain crucial insights into the workings of gravity and the foundational forces governing our cosmos. The possibility of generating these tiny black holes in such high-energy collisions opens a window to explore the nature of gravity and its interactions with other fundamental aspects of the universe. So like this um, solar eclipse is really being hyped up right now. This is going to be like if you got like I was saying in the, the past video as well, if you got kids, right, your grandkids and they play Fortnite, they got their own events happening in Fortnite. This is going to be our Fortnite event Bruh. in real life. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be a real world event that's going to happen. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be too bad or anything bad will happen. I mean, okay, yeah, there there have been reports and some people are saying that, okay, stock up on food, man, for at least three days worth of food because you'd never know. Okay, that's sound advice. I, I mean, precaution is better than cure, okay, yeah, fear. But, like, uh, if you're really, really... Don't don't be too worried about it, is all I'm gonna say. Like, it's all fear-mongering and all that. But I surely am concerned with CERN, uh, okay, that I definitely am concerned with, for sure. ...in a controlled setting. In a different hypothetical situation, the Large Hadron Collider has the potential to unintentionally generate a wormhole, an imagined passage through the fabric of space-time linking far-flung areas of the universe. Wormholes are currently only conjectural constructs, yet their theoretical ability to expedite travel beyond the speed of light or open up avenues for communication over vast cosmic expanses renders them a captivating topic for scientific investigation. The concept of a wormhole, if brought into existence by the Collider, 
could revolutionize our understanding of the universe and the laws of physics. Mm. Delving into the idea of initiating a portal through the Large Hadron Collider presents a fascinating prospect that captivates curiosity. However, it triggers substantial ethical dilemmas and considerations of utmost importance. Central to these deliberations is the apprehension surrounding unforeseen repercussions, notably the emergence of perilous occurrences like miniature black holes or erratic wormholes as plausible outcomes. In addition, the activation of a portal holds immense significance for mankind, promising to not only reshape our perception of the universe, but also potentially reconfigure the very essence of existence. Scientists Guys, click on this video on the screen. This is the last episode that we've done, and uh, a lot of people are also concerned with like what's going on right now. Like, check this video out. It's it's very very deep, very very deep. Check it out, and I'll see you right.